What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, aka The Soul Professor, here to educate you on health and fitness and social well-being. Today guys, I'm going to give you all the tips you need to make sure you have a successful cut. I am the greatest. Someone look power! Someone look power! Alright guys, so before I even get started, let me explain that I'm approaching this video from the standpoint that you already know um, what your calories need to be for your cut. You already have your calories and your macros completely calculated and figured out. If you are not aware of how to do that, guys, I have an entire video over calories and macros and how to calculate it based off your cutting, maintaining, or bulking, and I'll leave the link to that in the description down below. So check that out if you have no idea how to calculate your calories or your macros for whatever your goals are. With that being said, guys, um, the first point that I want to get into is that once you have your calories and macros figured out, you want to test that number for about a week or two and see how it affects your weight. Because the first tip, guys, is that you don't want to lose more than half a pound to one pound a week. The reason for this, guys, is simply that you want to take your cuts slow. You want to be nice and gradual. And losing half a pound to a pound a week is a great way of ensuring that what you're really burning is fat, but you're holding on to as much muscle mass as possible. A lot of people, for the sake of health, you know, they say, you know, you can lose a pound to two pounds a week and that is true for the sake of health from the standpoint of pulling on the muscle mass we want to try to keep it to half a pound to a pound a week the only exceptions guys being if you're extremely overweight or obese then you may want to cut off a bit of extra weight early on by losing two pounds at first but even before you're done with your cut you're going to still want to dial it down to half a pound to one pound a week so that's the first tip guys. all right guys the second tip is all about how much protein you need to be in taking this is the one thing that seems to throw a lot of people off even once they have their calories calculated and their macros calculated it's always a question of man, do I have too much protein? Do I not have enough? So let me first start by dispelling a myth really quickly. A lot of you guys think that you're supposed to have one gram of protein per pound of body weight no matter what you're doing. Guys, it's actually one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, which basically means if you take your body weight and you divide it by 2.2, that's pretty much going to give you your um, body weight in kilograms. And that's how many grams of protein you actually need to be taking in if you're just like maintaining, for example. Now, in my video, which like I said, will be in the description where I talk about calories and macros, I approach it from a slightly different standpoint. The way I have it set up is that you're going to take in half your um, body weight and pounds, cut it in half, and that's how many grams of protein that you're gonna be taking in if you're maintaining. So that's about the same as if you take your body weight and divide it by 2.2, it's just a few grams higher, and that's if you're maintaining. If you're bulking, it's gonna be 0.8 grams um, for every pound of body weight that you do. That's how you're gonna be doing it if you're, uh, if you're bulking. Just because you want a little bit more protein, just because you're gonna have a little bit more calories when you're bulking. But the only time you're actually gonna be taking in a whole gram per pound of body weight, guys, is when you're cutting. The reason for that being is that you want a higher protein intake for, once again, you're trying to hold on to as much muscle mass as possible. So that higher protein intake is gonna help you with that. So even though it's technically one gram per kilogram of body weight, that's why in that video I explained it as far as just using your body weight in pounds, because it's 0.5 for maintaining, 0.8 for bulking, and then one gram if you're actually cutting. So if you're taking in one gram, guys, per pound of body weight, that's going to be plenty for when you're cutting. Now, is there anything wrong with having a bit more than that? No, but it all depends on your reasoning. Some people, they take in more during your cut because protein is a lot harder for the body to digest, so it helps to keep you full, which is great. And then some people just enjoy protein-based foods. That's fine, guys. It's okay if you want to go over the gram per pound of body weight, but that's all that is necessary for your cut. All right, guys. So the third point is how do you adjust your calories or your macros if your weight stalls? Well, the first thing to do, guys, is not freak out. More often than not, whenever somebody's weight starts stalling, stalling during a cut, you know, it's going really well. And then they see that their weight doesn't drop, let's say like within a week, they freak out. The first thing they want to do is start doing, you know, like two hours of cardio every day, or they want to drop their calories by like another 500. Guys, that's not needed. Don't trip, relax, take a deep breath and understand that stalls in your weight is normal on a cut. And it can be for different reasons, guys. It's, let's say that it's a week where you you, you still hit your, your cal caloric deficit number, you didn't go above it, but let's say maybe you had a bit more carbs than usual. Well, guys, if you had more carbs than usual, that can cause water retention, which can cause fluctuations in your weight. And it just depends. Like for example, me, I'm at maintenance right now. I'm taking in the exact same calories every day, but my macros sometimes shift. Some days I have more carbs, some days I have more fats. Well, on days where I have more carbs, I can wake up the next day two or three pounds heavier than what I did the day before. I didn't just magically gain three pounds of fat, so that's not anything I necessarily have to worry about. It's the same thing with you guys. So whenever you immediately hit a stall in your weight, the best thing to do is give it another week or even two weeks to see if it stays there or if it goes down. If it starts going down, then you're fine. You don't have to worry about adjusting anything with your calories or your macros. Now, if it 
doesn't go down, if it stays stalled for, you know, let's say it's stalled the first week and then you wait another week and then it's been two, three weeks and your weight is still stalled, that's when you want to adjust your calories. And the best thing that I always suggest people do is to just drop your calories by 100 calories, which generally means most people just drop about 25 grams of carbs because, you know, for every um, one gram of carb, that's four calories. And if you guys aren't sure about all the numbers as far as like, you know, how many calories are in fat, carbs, protein, once again, that I go over that in the other video that will be in the description. So you have to worry about figuring that out right now. But that's the best thing to do. Just drop your calories by about 100 calories. See how that affects your weight. And if your weight starts dropping, then you're good. But you want to make very small adjustment, guys. Now, there, the second way that you can adjust um, to a stall is instead of in working with your calories, you can start doing cardio, which leads into the fourth point. Okay, so the fourth point is all about how to effectively utilize cardio on a cut. So as I was saying, if you hit a stall and you decide, let's say that you already feel like your calories are really low and you really don't want to make any adjustments. You love how your carbs, your protein, and fats all are. What you can do is start implementing cardio. Now, as I've said in previous videos before, guys, cardio is not the key to fat loss. Being a caloric deficit is. The whole point of cardio and why it's called cardio is because it's for your cardiovascular system. It's for the health of your heart to help you with your conditioning and your endurance first and foremost. With that being said, it can be utilized to help you with your deficit if you're already tracking your macros and your calories to begin with. So if you already know the exact amount of calories you're taking in and let's say you don't you want to drop your calories by about 100 pounds uh, 100 pounds you want to drop your calories by 100 but you don't want to do it through your food what you can do is 100 calories worth of cardio approximately so let's say you start running a mile every day you can start doing that instead to kind of help create that bigger deficit and hopefully that's going to you know, helped you with that stall in your weight. Now, aside from that, guys, if you're just someone that just lets, does cardio in general, just keep in mind you can do that, you know, two to three times a week, however many times you usually do it, but don't get caught up in the idea that, okay, because I did more cardio on this day, that means that I can eat a little bit more. Like I said, that's not something you wanna do. That's not a habit you wanna get caught up in for the mere fact that, one, it's hard to ever be sure of exactly how many calories you're burning when you're doing cardio, like those machines, you know, if you're on a treadmill, it isn't always completely accurate. And keep in mind, different people's metabolisms work differently. Some people may burn about 100 calories when they run a mile, some people a little bit more, some people a little bit less. So it's best just to track your calories based off what you're taking in, not how much you're expending. And also, a lot of people get caught up in thinking, okay, I'll just do more cardio, so let me eat more, but they don't realize that by doing more of that cardio, you're just making yourself hungrier, which is push yourself in a position to make it even harder to stick to the calories you already have. So don't get caught up in that, guys. Just remember, cardio is a great tool to utilize if you already know the amount of calories you're taking in exactly, and you wanna do it just to create a bigger deficit, but not to make up for eating extra calories that you shouldn't have had in the first place. All right, guys, and the fifth point is, that you wanna make sure as far as your weight training that you are doing your best to maintain or even improve upon your strength. Now, I did a video previously where I talked about how a lot of people, you know, when they're bulking, they're training to get stronger because they're trying to build that muscle mass and how the mistake they make is that the moment they start cutting, they stop doing that. They try to program hop or they just go to like, you know, a bunch of high reps and try to do high volumes. They think that's gonna help with, you know, burning fat. Guys, your workouts are not gonna be what helps you burn the fat. Ultimately, it's gonna be that caloric deficit through your diet and you don't want to get in the habit of thinking, oh, well, let me just do more high volume to help because that's the opposite of what you want to do. In order to maintain and even continue to build strength while in deficit, you want to focus on simple programming, meaning you want to go in there, you want to hit your compound movements and then a little bit of isolated accessory work, but you still want to focus on progressive overload. So whether you're doing five sets of five, three sets of three, three sets of 10, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that you're doing your best to still get stronger. Now, granted, it will be a little bit harder than when you're in a surplus just because you don't have as much energy. But keep in mind, even though you can't build muscle on a deficit, you can still build strength because as I've mentioned in previous videos before, a lot of our strength stands from our peripheral nervous system. So you can still train that, you can still get stronger. And the reason you wanna do that, guys, is because you wanna give your body a reason to hold on to that muscle mass. And you do that by continuously providing heavier loads to put on the body, which lets the body know, okay, I need to hold on to this muscle mass as best as I can because I need it to keep um, pushing these loads that, you know, the, that are being placed upon me so if your body were to talk to you like that but anyway so that's why you want to make sure you still keep it um the importance of progressive overloading doing your best to maintain the strength that you gained during your previous bulk and just continuously trying to get stronger as well as it puts you in a better position for when you're done with your cut whether you choose to maintain or bulk again you're already used to lifting heavy and to training for strength so you don't have to you know get your body readjusting to the swing of things once that's done 
And also guys, it's important to, to keep in mind that you may have to cut back on your volume though. You may, you know, either adjust your frequency, you still wanna keep lifting heavy, but you may cut back on things like a bunch of supersets and drop sets and pyramid style things, just because you wanna maintain as much energy as you can for getting stronger. You make that a lot harder to do, you make it a lot harder to progressively overload when you don't just have simple, straightforward things like, okay, I have three sets of this many reps. So that's the way you wanna train when you're on a cut, guys. You still wanna do your best to maintain your strength and even try to get strong. All right guys, so the last point and the final point that I'm gonna to touch on guys is to simply eat comfortably. The whole point of if it fits your macro guys and calculating your calories and your macros is that you can eat in whatever way works best for you so long as you are hitting those macros and you're staying under that um, right at or under that number for your caloric deficit. So if you're someone where you like to eat clean so that way you can eat a little bit more food but it's not quite as calorically dense, do that if you're someone where hey i like my burgers and pizza and you know god knows what else so that do that so long as you're hitting those macros you're good now i'm someone who's all about balance and moderation i personally whenever i'm doing something like that i try to have you know um two decent meals one's usually cooked at home one i may eat out but it's still a relatively healthy meal and then one meal where i just eat whatever i want but that's because that's what works best for me at the end of the day you have to do what works best for you eating the way that works best for you i'm really big on making sure you're still getting your nutrition whether it's through you know vitamins fruits vegetables whatever but it all comes down to doing what's best for you don't stress out over the numbers don't get so caught up in so much and you know like um oh i didn't hit my carbs and fats exactly perfectly what really matters at the end of the day guys with burning fat is that you're staying right at or under that total caloric number right after that you really want to do your best to hit your protein but if your carbs and fats sometimes fluctuate don't flip out it's all about what you're doing the majority of the time not the few times that you miss it so so long as for the most part you're hitting your calories you're hitting your macros you'll be okay so just eat in a way that's comfortable for you because the only diet you're going to stick to is the one that you enjoy one that's not overly restrictive that is pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope those tips were helpful. I hope that all of you have been asking me questions about cutting. I hope this really helps you all out. If it did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, you already know. Leave a comment down below. Let me know why you did enjoy this video. I'm open to all criticism, open to all feedback. It doesn't mean that I'm going to incorporate all of it in my videos, but I look at what's applicable and what I can do to make these videos better for you guys. Like the video, share, Subscribe, keep it simple, specific, scientific, I'll catch y'all later. I am the greatest. Come on, look